Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Welcome back to our ongoing Languages Game Engine series. The whole idea behind this series is we are going to look at the various different game engine options available for a said programming language. So far we've already done uh, 3D game engines in C++, uh, 3D game engines in C Sharp, general game engines in Lua, and today we are going to do the same thing in Hacks. Now, I bet you a lot of you did not see Hacks coming next, but eh. It's next. Now, I'm going to have to change and cheat a little bit to make this list relevant at all because, frankly, most of these are frameworks. Um, there's no level editors attached. A lot of these are even lower level frameworks, such as uh, kind of similar in scope to, say, SDL or SFML in that they provide cross-platform uh, functionality that other engines build on top of. But the Hacks ecosystem is kind of a, an area where people really like building their own. So you've got a lot of these low-level tools that other tools depend on, that other tools depend on, that game engines are built on. On top of. So I am going to be covering those low level frameworks. In fact, we're going to start at the bottom and then work our way up. So we're going to start with the lower level stuff and then we're going to start with the 2D frameworks and then we're going to move on to a couple of 3D frameworks. So without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at what is out there for hacks. Now, the first one is something called NME or the Native Media Engine. This is a low level cross platform library for providing things like graphics, 2D graphics, um, input handling and audio. Uh, that's about it. We're going to see more of enemy coming up. Now, generally, you would not work at this level. This is the kind of level that other engines and frameworks are built upon. But there's nothing stopping you from working this level. It does provide you um, platform support for, say, Nico, CPP, Flash, Mac, Windows, Android, WebOS, and iOS, which is basically all the important ones, um, at a low level. So if you just want something to give you the ability to draw on screen, to pull input, to create sound, this is the level you start at or this. Lime is another one of those low level frameworks. This one supports windowing, input events, audio, render context, network access, and assets. Um, it's not technically a renderer, uh, but it exposes a number of options and there's stuff built on top of it. Now again, Lime is a low level plumbing kind of technology. It is used in some of these other engines we are about to talk about shortly. Again, you generally wouldn't work at the Lime level unless you were creating your own framework. Uh, as you can see, most of these things are going to be open source, by the way, but that one is MIT licensed. All right, so that is uh, NME and Lime. Coincidentally, I will, of course, throw this list of links down below so you don't have to pay any attention. Uh, next up we have Ka. Now Ka is built on top of Lime. Is this getting confusing yet? Uh, Ka basically provides a little bit more. Basically it is uh, closer to SFML or SDL in what it provides, maybe even a little bit higher than that, because I think it's actually even got 3D model support. Uh, works on just about every platform you could possibly imagine. We're looking at HTML5, uh, various different Windows renderers, UWP, Mac OS, Linux, Android, iOS, TVOS, Raspberry Pi, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, Tazen, Flash, Unity. Yes, you actually run your game in Unity that's generated using Ka. Um, and we're going to see Ka is used in a couple of game engines, most specifically Armory, which we will get to in a second. I actually did a video on Ka. Click the Learn More link beside it to learn more. Well, that's, hey, that's well named about the Ka uh, framework. But this is, again, plumbing level. Most game engines are built on top of Ka, but it is also a very good starting point for building your own game. Now, to carry a little bit of confusion, Ka is built on top of Lime. So you see how this is an entire ecosystem of supporting architectures? Well, that's what you're seeing here. Next up, we have OpenFL. Now, OpenFL um, kind of tried to replicate the whole Flash uh, ecosystem in Hacks. A lot of Hacks developers moved over when Flash became less and less supported, less and less popular. Uh, Flash was heavily inspired by ActionScript, which was the programming language behind Flash. So basically, OpenFL is Open Flash, so that's the idea behind the naming. It used to be called NME, which is a little confusing because NME ended up being the low-level cross-platform stuff that OpenFL is ultimately built on top of. OpenFL and Ka are very similar in what they provide, except for uh, OpenFL is probably a little bit higher level, and it tries to emulate the um, uh, the Flash workflow. So if you are a Flash developer, OpenFL is probably where you want to go. Now keep Flash in mind because we're going to get back to that in a couple of seconds. First, we're going to talk about Away3D. Now, Away3D was a high-level scene graph built on top of Flash and enabled you to do 3D graphics in Flash. Away3D has been implemented on top of OpenFL. So if you are interested in porting an Away3D game over to the Hacks ecosystem, Away3D is at least partially supported on OpenFL. 
via OA3D. Now you'll see here, it includes other stuff like model loading. So if you want to bring in 3D assets, shadows, lighting, texture mapping, that kind of stuff. Again, it's not a full blown game engine, but it's getting closer and closer. At this point in time, with OA3D and OpenFL, we're kind of dealing with about equivalent to say LibGDX in scope and function. All right, on the topic of Flash, we've also got two very popular 2D frameworks that were ported over to the Hacks ecosystem from the Flash world. And now, in fact, I believe both of them are far more popular on the Hacks side of things than the original projects that inspired them. First one is Hacks Flixel. Hacks Flixel is a 2D game engine. It's very simple to use. It allows you to cross compile to a number of different uh, platforms. It is actively developed. It is funded. It is open sourced. Um, it has been used to make some games that I don't know off the top of my head. I think I've also done a video on Hacks Flixel. I'm not 100% sure on that, but if I have, click the learn more link and you will learn more. The next one is Hacks Punk. So you had Flash Punk and Flax Flixel. Well, it was just Flixel. Uh, but Flixel and Hacks Punk were very popular in the Flash world. Now they're in the Hacks world. And you see here, Hacks Punk has been ported over. Again, it's very easy to use cross platforms. So you got Windows, Mac, Linux, HTML5, and both mobile platforms, uh, all supported. It's a 2D game engine. This one's built on top of OpenFL or NME, which is a little confusing because I think OpenFL is built over enemy, but I never said that the Hacks ecosystem doesn't get a bit confusing at times. Generally, when you're dealing at the uh, Hacks Punk or Flax Pixel level, you don't really care too much about what the underlying provider is. All you care is how many platforms it supports, and it uses those technologies to support all of these platforms. So you are well stocked for 2D game engines or 2D game frameworks when it comes to the world of Hacks. Now, we haven't really seen a true full-blown engine yet. There's nothing in here with a full editing environment, level editor, that kind of stuff. So let's stay tuned for, boom, Stencil. Now Stencil is not technically hacks, kinda. Uh, Stencil is a visual builder. It's in the same vein as um, Construct2 or GDevelop. Uh, it, it's one of those where basically you build your logic using this visual flow graph system. Now I mention it in this list, well, for a couple reasons. First off, it is a full blown game engine. It has a full editing environment like you see right here. No need to use an external tool such as Tiled. And that's always nice. It supports many, many platforms. Uh, and um, why it's relevant to this list is you can actually create your own extensions and code and, and operators and all those other things uh, using the Hacks programming language. Now there is a limited version, there is a commercial version attached to this, so pricing wise, Indie is 100 bucks a year if you want to publish to desktop targets. So do be aware of that. And then if you want to publish to mobile targets, you're at $200. So unlike everything else on this list, Stencil is not completely free. But it is also probably the most beginner friendly of the options on this list. And I think I've done a video on Stencil or a closer look at. If so, again, click the learn more link to uh, I'll learn more. And then now we move on to Heaps. Now Heaps is probably the current darling of the Hacks game world. This one or the one coming up next. Now Heaps is a 2D, 3D game engine from the creator of Hacks. So there's some uh, some history there. The guy, so the guy that created Heaps, Heaps also created Castle DB, which is integrated, which is a persistence engine, or you could call it a database, uh, for kind of creating games. So if you're looking at creating a... Um, a role-playing game or something to that effect, uh, a 2D side-scroller or a 3D game using the Hacks programming language, Heaps might be the right one for you. And Heaps actually has some games you've heard of, uh, like this guy right here, which is my current obsession in the world, uh, which is um, Dead Cells, which has currently broken both my thumbs on my Nintendo Switch. Dead Cells was created using um, the Heaps game engine, uh, as was Northgard. And then he did two earlier engines. Uh, I don't remember which ones they were. So Dead Cells, Northgard, Evil Land 1 and 2, and then various other game jam uh, type titles, etc. But this is production tested and running. So these are games you can download in app stores and that are very well reviewed. So again, Dead Cells is my current obsession. So I can obviously speak that you can publish uh, commercial quality games using Hacks programming language and the Heaps game engine. And of course, if you're going to check out Hacks and Heaps, also check out Castle DB, the persistence engine that also works with all of it. I have done a short tutorial series very early on uh, with the Heaps uh, game engine. I'll throw that in the learn more link. And then finally, we have Armory 3D. Now, if you've not heard of Armory 3D, you have not been paying attention to my channel lately. Armory 3D is a uh, 3D game engine built 
into Blender. Uh, all of your game logic is coded using either Blender nodes or the Hacks programming language. Both are, you know, uh, first party citizens, I suppose you could say, although Hacks has more functionality. Also, Hacks has access to the underlying Ka framework and technically Lime underneath that. So that's kind of why I did the whole spiel about all of these supporting technologies. So you've got Lime and on top of Lime, you've got Ka and on top of Ka, you have Armory. And it supports all of the platforms that Ka supports, which means basically everything. Um, you can do your coding and your game design and your level work, all of everything basically directly inside of Blender, both 2.7 and even Blender 2.8. Eight, where you'll also be able to take advantage of EV real-time rendering. Um, but you can fully script out your logic using the Hacks programming language. If you're interested in learning more, I have a full tutorial series on dev game, which I will toss in the Learn More link, but it will teach you everything you need to know to get up and running with Armory 3D, both using the nodes-based system inside of the Blender game engine, and of course, the Hacks programming language alongside of it. The cool thing is Ka also has a version of Visual Studio Code that acts as an IDE, which is also shipped with Armory. So you have your own code editing environment, you have your own editor in the form of Blender, you have your own content creation system in the form of Blender, you have two options for programming in the form of nodes in Blender and in forms of the Hacks game framework. And that is a big chunk of why people are pretty stoked about the Armory 3D game engine. Also, it is an open source project. Uh, so definitely one to keep an eye on. Uh, I've, again, done a comprehensive tutorial system uh, uh, series on it. Uh, they also just released Armory 0.5 beta, and I would have done a video on it, but they didn't actually tell us what was in that release, so it wouldn't have been a very interesting video. But if I do figure out what's in that release, I will do an updated video on, hey, here's what's new in Armory 0.5, but it's definitely an engine I am keeping my eyes on. I did a tutorial about it. And I hope you do check it out. So there's some vibrancy in the um, the Hacks ecosystem. The hacks Punks and Hacks Flex will really dominate on the 2D side of things. Heaps is an all-around useful game engine. Again, you're not getting your editing environment like you do from a Unity or Unreal or a Godot. But it is production tested, very cross-platform. And this is a, a very coder-first kind of ecosystem. Uh, there's a strong coding support. So if you're the kind of guy that would rather write a lot of code than use an editor... Hacks might be the place to check out for you. It's a very simple language to pick up. It's like I said, it's a lot like Action Script evolved, uh, but it's very, very cross-platform. Uh, all right, that is it for now. Let me know what you think. And of course, I may have missed some. There was a bunch that were around uh, that seemed to have died off a bit. And then there was a couple like Snow Kit, uh, which has the Lux game engine built on top of it, but it doesn't really seem to be supported as Snow Kit for hacks anymore. And Lux is no longer using hacks. It's now using Ren, which is confusing as hell. That whole project, if I'm honest, has been re-engineering and recreating and not quite ready for production kind of thing for four or five years now. And pfft, I just don't have any faith it's ever going to turn into anything. And definitely doesn't seem to be a hack space project anymore. But if I'm wrong on that, let me know down below. It's very confusing, the development lifecycle of the Lux game engine. Uh, but if you want to check out one more, Google for Lux. Um, like I said, it's now using Ren instead of Hacks. So I don't know that I'd call it a Hacks engine anymore. So I didn't include it. Okay, let me know what you think. Let me know if I missed any. Let me know if you're using Hacks. Let me know if you hate Hacks, love Hacks, whatever. Let me know. All right, talk to you all later. Goodbye.